Hey guys, welcome back to another craft kit testing episode here on So Craftastic. In the last one, I tested a kit that is nearly 50 years old. This vintage pottery wheel, if you missed out on the video and you want to see it, go ahead and check the link in the description box below as well as the iCard up here. Today's kit is a little bit older, 90 years to be exact. Yes, 9-0. I couldn't believe it either when I found this on Etsy. It's from 1929. Let's take it out of the bubble wrap. This is so cool to be able to hold such an old piece of history. The box, of course, is kind of falling apart a little bit, but it's actually in pretty nice condition for being 90 years old. Before we get into this, I want you guys to vote on the next kit. I'm not going to show any of them, but please type below in the comments if you want to see a new craft kit or an old craft kit. I like to include this boat in every single video just to get you guys more involved and excited for the series. This kit won by a long shot. According to this tally sheet, you can see what I mean. Now in the next one, I'm not going to tally them by hand. I'm going to use the command F to find all the words. So please type out all three words in order for your vote to count because that's what I'm going to search for. Getting back to the kit, this is how to make bead mat. There's a chipmunk outside the window. <laughs> There's really nothing on the back except this faint mark in the corner. I tend to sniff the things that I'm testing. This does not smell moldy or mildewy or old for that matter. It smells like a normal box. I'm going to try to do some research on maybe crafting in the 1920s, 30s and see why this kit may have been significant. This kit was registered in Spears Games, Great Britain, and Canada. It was manufactured at the Spear Works Bavaria, designed in England, copyright 1929. Fun fact, my grandpa was actually born in 1928. His 90th birthday was last year. Opening this up, inside the lid of the box, are the instructions. Beads have always been popular for making necklaces and other articles of adornment. Amongst the prettiest articles to be made are colored mats, which require nothing more than the threading of beads on a long, strong thread. There was no comma there, so it got a little thrown off. And then it goes on to explain all the steps, of course, and breaks everything down one move at a time. So here's what's inside the kit. There's not a whole lot, to be honest, but I cannot be an ounce disappointed at all. How many craft kits do you think are still intact that are this old? By the way, if you guys ever happen to see any on like Etsy or eBay that I might like, drop me a message on Twitter or Instagram. I very much appreciate that if you're just kind of looking around and you're like, oh, this is, this is cool, Sarah, I might like this. There are two patterns included in the box and whoever had this, they put a bunch of holes through this pattern. I guess when they would finish the bead, that makes sense. Like they knew that they had finished it, but they started at the outside. So actually, no, that doesn't make sense at all because you have to start in the middle. That's what the instructions say. I may have to use my own string because this is all that is in here and it's already been used. There's not a whole lot of excess and the ends are very frayed. Not sure about the history of Ziploc bags. Would this have been around in 1929? Also, there is one needle, a sewing needle. So I actually found a second needle in the box. This one is a lot bigger. I'll see which one is easier to use. I don't know if this is the original. And they do appear to be wooden beads. Some of them have the color worn away but otherwise they're in pretty good condition if any of you guys are wondering where i got this it was from an etsy shop like i mentioned called deco to disco vintage 2 as in the roman numeral 2. i got it for 28 dollars plus 5 dollars shipping which equals 33 so not a bad price ticket for such a unique piece something that makes me extra excited and just it means that it was meant to be in my mind is the seller actually is from or lives in Tulsa, Oklahoma and I lived there for a couple years and it's basically my favorite city in the entire world that I've ever been to. I took this part out just to see if anything else was hidden underneath and I didn't find anything except for this little tiny bug. It's not alive. I don't know if it came from my house or 
if it was, you know, in the box for many years. But it's just one of those weird paper bugs, or I, I really don't know what it is, honestly, but I find it on pieces of paper every once in a while. Another really cool thing about this box is these two white panels here are actually wood. So boxes were put together very, very nicely in 1929. There's a staple here and here and here. Now I'm gonna try to create the bead mat. So that's what the rest of this video is going to be. Step one, I'm gonna need a new piece of cord. This is the hodgepodge of different twines and strings, elastic, shoelaces, and these heart friendship bracelets that I never finished because they take so long, but I do have a tutorial for them. I am looking for this. Actually, I may have to use this silver cord because it's a lot thinner. Here's the thickness on this one, and I don't think I can thread the needle with this. The beads are over here in my wall of craft drawers. I don't think I've showed you guys this part of the basement yet since we moved in. I'm not sure. I don't have any wooden beads that are exactly the same size, but these ones are a tiny bit bigger, and these ones are a little bit smaller over here, and then I have square ones, so we'll be able to make something work if I have to. Step two, I am untying the existing knots so I can get these beads off and start making the actual uh, bat mat. <laughs> mat. The mat. The cord that came with the kit is actually very nice quality. It has a waxy coating and that allows it to be flexible and it kind of feels like a thick piece of dental floss but no residue really comes off on your skin. It doesn't like feel gross or anything. So yeah, I really like this. Step three, this isn't something that you have to do but since I'm not sure how many beads I actually have. I'm going to lay them out on this pattern and that's not gonna be very easy apparently. And I'm just gonna see, you know, what colors I have to put where and if I do have enough to finish it. So this is great news. There's enough to go in the entire center. So these seven flowery shapes right here, they are all filled. There's just one less navy blue than there needs to be, one or two. This one looks like it's a black one. Um, I thought there was another one that looked kind of dark, but anyway, that will make that work. So we are missing a couple of these to complete the like triangle shapes, but then there's three in between all of those. And these are the only other ones that I have left over. So I'm gonna have to bring in a few extras um, from my personal collection to finish the entire thing, but we're gonna get pretty far. Step five, I think we're on. This one is proving to be a bit of a challenge. I'm trying to thread the needle. The eye is a little bit small, so I'm using the second needle to try and just push that through. I'll get it. Don't worry. Got it. So this is definitely why the end of this string from the kit is frayed because they couldn't thread the needle. It was too wide for it. The only thing is I can't mess up because if I do have to take a bead off, then I'm gonna have to re-thread it and that is not going to be fun. Now step six is to move on to step one of the instructions. So I'm going to thread on six beads. And if you are doing this like me, be careful not to poke your skin. Oh no, okay. Oh, they're kind of a tight pull to get them off, but oh my gosh, some of them have a smaller hole than others. It'll work. There we go. Yay. Now I have the first six beads pushed all the way to the other end of the string. I'm going to tie a knot and make that form a loop. Here's my ring of beads, and the next step is to thread a single bead, but it won't go. The hole's too small. 
I think I'm gonna have to use the smaller needle. New plan, I'm painting the end of the string with nail polish because that little needle is not gonna work. Now I can thread this bead on really easily too. And sorry if I do hold this string out of focus, it's a little bit hard to keep in a certain depth of field. Once the bead is all the way down by the loop, I'm going to put the string through the next bead. So through here, oh my gosh, please go through. No, gosh. I took everything apart and switched to the thinner silver cord as well as the tiny needle. So now nothing's gonna go wrong. As I said, I'm going to just put the needle through one of the beads and okay do not get tangled please do not get tangled don't get tangled don't get tangled i have very long string so there we go that's the go yes I'm going to continue that same step around the entire loop so it looks like this. For bead number six, I actually took the needle and threaded it through this one and this one. You want the thread to come out of a point as it does explain here. And it shows that you're gonna put three on and then thread the needle through the next point. I'm doing pink instead of blue, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to just, like I said, take the needle and put that through the next point. Whoa. Um, and continue to pull all the way looking really cool already and this is really easy in the diagram it's showing that the thread needs to go through the top point of this bead right here so I'm gonna have to put the needle through the tan and then the two pinks so three beads in total make sure when you do this you're not pulling the thread too ridiculously tight or else it's gonna be a bit difficult to get the needle through but not impossible there. All right, so I'm putting it through these two first, then through this third. Sometimes the previous loops will be a little bit too loose, so you can tighten those as you go. And then it should look something like this. Another really cool thing is my very first Crafty Friday video. It was how to make beaded stars. It's actually very similar, so if you want a more in-depth tutorial on how to make these beaded things, go ahead and check out the video in the description box below. Here I've added two pink and two black, and I'm going to put the needle through this top point here. Oh my gosh. Just ignore that I got that tangled. There we go. And of course, going around, I'm going to repeat that. So for the next one, I'll have two black and two navy, then two navy, two pink and I'll put the needle through the top bead every single time. Just finishing up this inner circle. So for whatever reason, these are not circling. They're not puffing out and becoming, you know, the ring like the center. So these are all supposed to be like this one. Maybe I just need to move on to the next row and see if that fixes it. So I'm going to do these beads one at a time all around. I'm not gonna show that step-by-step step on camera, but here are the instructions for you guys. If you wanna pause and do this on your own, you can read that and then move on to this, which is what I'm doing now. So there's that. And then this would be the final step. Also, if any of you guys wanna try this pattern, you can pause the screen and take a screenshot and try your hand at this one also. Leo, what are you doing? And we have made it to the final pull. All finished. 
Yay! I am opting to skip these beads that kind of go into a loop on the very outside. I kind of ran out of the old ones. This is all I have left. So actually these ones in the middle are the new ones that I got from my own collection. But I think that they fit in really nicely. And then I also put these little ones. Finally, I tied a couple knots, cut off the string, and it's finished. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up to let me know. I post a brand new video here every single Friday, so ring that bell if you never want to miss out. It'll turn post notifications on for you. Go. What do you have to say? Oh, nothing. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Bye. Ah! <laughs> I almost dropped it.